Hey, hello everybody, it's me, Dana. It's April 9th, 2015. Did you see it? January, February, March, gone. Did you blink? Did you miss them? The rest of the year is going to fly by just as fast. If you want to do something this summer, you should have planned it yesterday. <laughs> it's going to be a year for those who go with the flow. You got to be spontaneous, living in the moment, people. Big, heavy, long term plans are not going to work for a lot of people. And people who are set and determined to live in that way are going to find their, um, um, their worlds are going to be crumbled and shattered in big ways this year. Um, some hardcore, deep planning things are just going to be. It's kind of like, um, you know, you got it all in place and then whoop, the flood showed up. Oh, didn't see that one coming. Well, it's, there's going to be a lot of, <laughs> could not have seen that coming, the things happening this year. And that just came to me. So sharing as it comes and giving it with you. I got my Earth Magic deck out today. I'm going to draw three cards, so I want you to use your intuition and pick one, two, or three. Which card is for you today? Okay? So, just sit there for a moment, close your eyes, and tune into the deck with me, okay? Tune into the energy. More and more of us are going to be able to um, do this telepathically thing um, because I am noticing it amping up and clearing. And um, the uh, if you're paying attention to it, it's it's so much clearer. And uh, a few of you wrote to me about um, how I'm asking me how my how been handling the uh, the energy shifts and the solar and the eclipse and all the moon and everything else and I gotta tell you it knocked me on my butt um, I was pretty exhausted for uh, the long weekend that we just went through here in Canada um, I was picking up everything and anything and I was just literally exhausted also I am still um, recovering healing my back so um it's pretty intense injury it's taken quite some time to recover and it also um corresponds with the things that are going on in my personal world it's been um a very foundation changing year um the past 12 months so <sighs> Some big players left a lot of our worlds, okay? And um, with that, um, some other shifting, changing, reality changing information has come to light. And we've been asking for it. I myself, I love mystery. I want to solve the puzzle. And one of those mystery and puzzles of, uh, that I've been trying to solve for years is... Um, the mystery of my own world, my own life. Um, there's so many things that have been blocked from my memory and my knowing, and a lot of questions. And those answers have been coming forward, and lots of healing going on. And it also goes along with and represents, you know, where the pain and things have happened in my back. And I am able to see clearly now the clues that, you know, the universe has been putting there in my face for the last year and a half on this um, life-exploring journey that I've been on. Like, um, when my daughter, I told my daughter, when you're ready, let me know, and, uh, you know, I'm leaving the nest. <laughs> this little bird needs to go out there and fly and explore and uh, check some strange things out. And I had no plan. Nope, no planning. <laughs> Just hopped on a plane, 50 bucks in my pocket, and away I went. And uh, I knew I had to be on that island. Uh, where exactly and who, what, why, I didn't know. I just knew I had to go. So 
I did. And uh, I've been spending a lot of uh, reflective time in the last uh, little bit here as over all of the souls that I did come into contact with that crossed my path and the way we interacted and the the healing and revealing um, that it um, gave to me and to them. Um, it was an extremely beautiful journey for many souls the last year and a half opened up so many new realities, dimensions, perspectives, knowings, gifts, and I feel like uh, I just put down all of the little gifts along the way, and now I have the opportunity to really acknowledge them, see them, and pick them all up and use them to go forth from this point in the journey onward. And uh, they all fit together so beautifully and magically, and I'm really grateful for the journey and the experiences, even though at times they scared the boop out of me. Um, some pretty um, intense moments, you know, when you have a vision of you're, you're going to be needing to stay in some place and you're like, I don't know how that's going to happen. And then this thought pops in your head, oh my God, it's not going to hurt, is it? And then, oh, yeah, yeah, it is. Um, <laughs> so uh, there's been some really cool challenges, but um, without those challenges, I would not have built these wings as strong and big and beautiful as I have. So the um, experiences and challenges just added to my beautiful toolkit of healing that's going to help even more and more people as I keep going forward on this journey. And I am so grateful for all the beautiful souls that have crossed my path and that I'm connecting with. Thanks to all of you who are writing to me and uh, connecting with me. Um, uh, even off of the website here and um, I'm going to be I'm working on creating my website again uh, when it's ready you'll be able to find more about me at <clears throat> happy is the real rich.com it's not up and active yet but soon 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 I've been waiting for this clearing this uh, this opening space I knew it was coming um, but uh, <laughs> all the pieces weren't in place yet, so um, they're here now. So, number one, if you chose number one. <laughs> Love, compassion, all right? So, <laughs> I'll read from the book for all of these. Love, compassion. Where did I put those? Just so it's a little bit clearer for me. In this beautiful image, we see hands reaching towards one another through a heart. The green field surrounding them is the color of the fourth or heart chakra. It's when we feel love in our heart center that we not only naturally emit the healing energy of compassion, but we also attract love and compassion. Studies by the HeartMath Institute reveal that the electrical signals from the heart are up to 60 times stronger than the brain's, and the magnetic field is as much as 5,000 times more powerful. This power, this brain, this center is 5,000 times more powerful than this one. And so what does that tell you for those of you who use this as your main operating center and think, you know, this is the way of the world to success. And, you know, yeah, it's okay to go down here once in a while, but we don't want to get stuck down here and woo-woo, feely, touchy, compassion land too long. But you're the ones who have never, ever achieved sheer happiness. You haven't experienced that beautiful, sheer happiness, joy, for any great length period of time in your life. You know it. You know it. Because it's not possible. If you're here and you got this on, all right, we'll hear from you the peanut gallery every once in a while, but not too much, right? 
Now, for whatever reason you decided this is because, you know, society mainstream told you, you know, it's like, hey, the only way to great success and money and achievement in this world is, you know, university education. Wow, so many of us followed for that one. And it's not the big truth. The big truth is if you are following this and you tap into your passion, your purpose, why you, your unique soul being is here on this planet, that's when you find you're happy and that's when you become rich. Happy is the real rich. I've met miserable, miserable millionaires. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I've met happy, delirious, joyful, living in the moment, homeless people. It's not money, honey. Money is not the key to happiness. Uh, they made posters about that, you know. Alice in Wonderland, Dorothy, you know, the yellow brick road, bullshit. The wizard ain't there. The answer ain't there. It's not in the bank, honey. Those gremlins lying to your ass. <laughs> it's given that our thinking patterns affect our feelings and in turn our reality. What we put out, whether it's love, fear, empathy, sadness, and so forth, contains an incredible amount of power to shape and influence our reality. What you think about, you bring about. What you put out, you get back. <sighs> when the focus of our attention and intention is love and compassion, we recognize no separation between self and others. If you're going around with your judge's cap on, oh, look at that person, and can you believe what they did and what they're wearing and how they're conducting their life and blah, 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 judge, judge, judge. You're gossiping, you're judging. You're not coming from love or compassion. And you're probably not a really super duper happy, healthy camper, gotta tell you. <sighs> the truth hurts. And that's a truth a lot of you need to face. Everything I see on that square box coming from most of your living rooms is judgmental and leading you down the wrong road. Turn it off. Get back in touch with this, this power center. This is where your purpose, your gifts, your happiness answers lie. I'm not I'm not making this shit up. It's out there. There's books about it. And if you haven't found them, maybe you need to go a different section of the bookstore. All right. All wounds stem from the illusion of separation from source and all creation. So if you're hurting, it's because you've separated from here. <clears throat> The route to healing this wound is through cultivating love and compassion for every being on this planet, including yourself. Oof, that's the one most of you is missing. Not a bland standard of unquestioned acceptance, but a heartfelt sense of profound relatedness to whatever you perceive as apart from yourself. True compassion requires not only the feeling of warmth that emanates when you are in touch with your heart center, but in acts of kindness, even if this simply means being a fully attentive listener. That's the number one rule most of you need to learn how to stop doing is stop this for a while. And start listening, not with here and trying to solve and fix and share everything you know in your way and your ego, ego, ego. Let go of your ego. Turn this off, turn this off, turn these off and listen with the ears in this heart. And when you master this, there will be few words coming from here because you'll actually be hearing people in your world, possibly for the first time. That in itself will heal a lot of wounds. So many of us think that 
who are helping others by sharing what we know and da 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 all the time. And in reality, what the people around us really want us to do is to be quiet and listen to them for a change and hear what they have to say. This message is going out to a lot of parents. If you really want to help your child, you need to listen to them, to their heart, not to what you know. You don't need, they don't need to listen to you. You need to listen to them in order for them to grow. <clears throat> the route to healing this wound is through cultivating love and compassion for every being, okay? True compassion requires not only feeling a warmth that emanates when you are in touch with your heart center, but in acts of kindness. Even if this simply means being a fully attentive listener. Okay, I said that before. Respect the fact that your heart is a giver, putting out electrical energy and a receiver, drawing in magnetic energy. These energies are best sensed by attending to the steady flow of your breathing while also noticing your heart area. Righteousness, fear, anger, and judgment are some common ways to block your natural desire to love. You're not naturally loving somebody if you're judging how they look, what they're doing, and how they're acting. Forgiveness is not only letting go of judgment, but also seeing through the illusion that you and all that is are separate. Look about you and inside of you and do your best to love whatever you see. You love it. Whatever you see, it changes your reality. Okay. Love what you see. Come with compassion. Change what you see. If you chose number two, this card is for you. Iceberg. Submerged. Up to 90% of an iceberg's body is below the surface. <sighs> Don't most of us feel like our true personality has been submerged below the surface because it didn't fit in with what everyone else was doing, so we had to hide ourselves. This is what I'm getting from this card right off. Um, <clears throat> deeply submerged in the bosom of Grandmother Ocean. Yet Grandmother allows considerable freedom for her enormous children, permitting them to move about as dictated by the currents and their own momentum. Having broken off from a glacier or ice shell, they float along the sea, much to the detriment of vessels that attempt to traverse their passageways. Most of us have heard stories of ill-fated ships that have had tragic encounters with these ice mountains. Although the topmost portion of an iceberg can easily be seen, there's still a massive amount of its body below the water that may be difficult to detect, and that which remains unseen can fool us and perhaps even be dangerous and damaging. Whatever you suppress or deny and attempt to keep out of consciousness awareness will show up somewhere and somehow. <laughs> I've said that before. <laughs> Whatever you say, don't bother me, don't bother me, it's okay. It's coming out somewhere. <laughs> Volcano? Iceberg? Who knows? These are your shadow aspects. At one time, you put them out of your consciousness for good reason, yet they remain contained by shame and guilt. Sometimes these submerged aspects of yourself are projected onto others so that they mirror those denied or suppressed parts of you, and you may even harshly judge these characteristics when they are exhibited. Now is the time to allow these elements to surface and embrace them. Love thyself, words and all. <laughs> These may make up some sort of self-expression, a secret dream you wish to accomplish. Time to share that weird, beautiful, unique side of yourself. <clears throat> or even uglier aspects that are difficult to acknowledge or accept. We're all human. Remember this. We've all 
make choices that maybe we're not necessarily proud of. But we did what we did with what we knew and what we had and the situation at the time. Forgive yourself. Move forward. Whatever you have submerged deep inside of you, this is your opportunity to pay attention to those things and welcome them to the family called you. <clears throat> all of you. We love you all. We love all of you. If you chose. Ah, number three. Fairies. Earth magic. There may be a message in each one of these that resonates with you. And that happens quite often for me. So take what you need and leave the rest, everyone. Okay? If you chose number three, fairies, earth magic is your message. Fairies and nature spirits thought to be descended from the earthly tribes, particularly the Tuatha de Danan, those associated with the goddess Dana, <laughs> who's once, who once ruled Ireland that inhibited the British Isles. Over time, these ancient people <clears throat> were conquered and displaced, and they fled to areas where humans didn't venture, ultimately becoming increasingly smaller and less visible in order to better hide themselves. That's what I felt like I've done my life. Try to become smaller and less visible, to blend into the woodwork, to be safer. It's time to come out of the woodwork, people. <laughs> Fairies have assumed responsibility for the plants and the trees or standing ones, as they're called. They work with earth magic to take care of these things. And if you ask, they'll help you with your garden or yard. They'll also have the power of enchantment and shape shifting. <laughs> Fairies appreciate it when we show them through our actions that we love the earth as much as they do. And consequently, they bestow a little of their earth magic upon us. I met a lady in this store yesterday, and I told her, I says, you definitely have fairies working with you in your garden. And she just looked at me like I was a little bit weird. <laughs> well, I am a little bit weird. <laughs> Not everybody talks to the fairies. You have the same power available to you as the fairies do. It starts with the loving earth, through your heartfelt gratitude and appreciation, but more important, through your actions. The fairies can help you reconnect in a more intimate way with the earth, and all they require is your willingness to pay attention to the trees and plant life around you, and demonstrate your care. Whether you live in a small space or have an expanse of, of land, Make it a point to be especially attentive to your surroundings, vegetation. Plant something. Get your hands in the dirt and do so with love and enthusiasm. Every flower, tree, or shrub you are tending is a living being. So treat each like you would a dear friend. Ask the fairies to help you take care of these friends and you will be rewarded many times over. Well, I was inspired to create this this morning. I hope it um, helps all of you and you heard the messages you needed to hear. And have a great day, everybody. It's me, Dana. <laughs>